Hey, it's Dr. Javen Moore here. I am gonna be talking about the comprehensive metabolic panel. There are so many hidden gems in this test that tell you so much about your body that I just can't tell you how amazing this test is. There are computers that are being designed and algorithms being put together to take the CMP, comprehensive metabolic panel, and the CBC, to put those two tests together, which are most common tests out there, and they're having 99% accuracy in predicting things like D vitamin deficiency and infection and all kinds of different disease processes just by looking at these because there's so much data there if you just learn how to get into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about just a few pieces of the CMP, some of my favorite ones that are just never talked about. So if you actually look at the CMP, there's some pieces in there. One of those pieces is the AST and ALT, so that's liver tests, right? Those are testing for liver enzymes. Now, first of all, your liver has to be pretty messed up or pretty tired for it to be elevated up pretty high. So the AST, ALT, for you to go over that normal lab threshold there, you've got to be talking about having some toxicity. So we need to get that down for you if that's up and you want to start doing some detox. But if you're too low, that means that your body's pretty weak. You could have a B6 deficiency, or you could just simply have a malnutrition situation where your body is under, under so much stress or under so much lack of absorption or gut dysfunction that you're not absorbing the nutrients. Your body is wore out. So that's what that means to me. But that's just getting started with this amazing test, right? So what else is in a CMP? Well, alkaline FOS is in there. Alkaline FOS is another test that goes after the liver and some of what it is dealing with. So I'm gonna get that pulled up here for us. And ALK FOS is awesome. Then from there, we're gonna be going into albumin and globulin. Albumin and globulin are amino acids or they're proteins, right? They're proteins that carry things around in your body. And when your body is deficient of those, likely that means that we're having a leaky gut kind of situation. So albumin and globulin is awesome to look at. And if it's low, like I said, you're probably having a leaky gut. If it's elevated in the albumin, then likely you're having a dehydration dehydration situation. But back to that ALK FOS I was talking about. ALK FOS, if it's elevated, it can be cancer. So if it's really high, you really need to get checked out. If it's a little high, think about liver obstructions, liver bile issues, so even in the gallbladder, gastrointestinal issues. So those are some of the th reasons why it could be elevated, right? Also, it, again, back to liver, if you're having a lot of liver toxicity, I've seen this go up. So parasites or bacterial type infections that are overwhelming your body, so things like Lyme, this can absolutely go up. As far as ALKFOS being decreased, you could have a zinc deficiency, magnesium deficiency, vitamin C deficiency. If this is low, I oftentimes think that your body, again, is, is breaking down. Just like when we were talking AST, ALT low, your body's breaking down, malabsorption, malnutrition, wore out, just like when your cholesterol is low. So this test, your AST, your ALT, so those are all together, the cholesterols and the livers. If those are low, we've got to get them up. We've got to get your body some more internal strength. We've got to drive that up. All right, so what other tests are part of the comprehensive metabolic panel? Well, you've got calcium and chlorides and carbon dioxides. Again, these tests are not usually talked about. So these are things that most people don't work with. So let's talk about some of those sodiums and potassium. So sodium and potassium, these are part of your energy system. So if your sodium is low, then you're going to be able to pass out. You're going to have lower blood pressure. If your potassium is low, then your body could even go into a alkalosis or a high pH state. So that's something that we got to pay attention to, but it's likely can be due to hyperaldosterone or hyperadrenal syndromes. So when that's up, you're thinking the, the adrenal situation. So when potassium is having an issue, think adrenal potentially, right? So we have a lot of fluid loss as a reason for potassium to go low. We have elevated insulin as a reason for potassium to go low. So you're peeing a lot, you're losing fluids, that's when your potassium goes low, right? So when your electrolytes are low, it can be from 
diabetes type reasons, from toxicity type reasons, your body's trying to flush out your detox into heavily, or hyper adrenal issues. So you're all stressed out, so then you're losing fluids and you're flushing out because aldosterone controls a lot of the electrolytes. And that goes both for your potassiums and for your sodiums on the low side. Now, if you're elevated potassium, then you're probably putting too many nutrients in, you're holding on to nutrients, you're not letting it out. You could be exercising way too hard and breaking down tissue. You could have renal failure, so your kidneys aren't flushing out well. So thinking about these things, and I'm just trying to throw these out there. I know I'm throwing a ton of information out at you, but you can slow this down and go back through if you're seeing these things in yours, and that's why I'm just getting this out. Sodium elevation, so we're on the sodium now. It can be from dehydration. It can be from, again, a hyperadrenal situation where it can crank it up, but it can also, when the hyperadrenals come in, you could be flushing out. So those are some of those things that you could be doing there. So anybody have any of these things that they have in their bodies, post below. Let me know what you're dealing with. Let me know how your body is functioning so that we can kind of go through some of this with you. I am offering a free consultation for people that are wanting to know more about this, but it's a giveaway that you could enter into this week. So if it's something of interest for you, I could look at some of your labs and talk to you, go through some of this. Some other things that we haven't talked about yet is that chloride and that carbon dioxide. Now these, these are ones that almost no one talks about, but for me, if you have an elevated chloride level, that means possible kidney dysfunction, right? So look at your GFR, which is part of the CMP. Look at your creatines and your buns. Those are all cre those are all kidney related, but you could have dehydration. You could be flushing out from diarrhea, but I look at chloride and when it is decreased or increased, it's telling me a little bit about your acidity level. If you are too high pH, then maybe you're not breathing well, you have some air hunger, are we talking Babesia, are we talking some sort of yeast issue where you're not getting in your breathing properly, so there might be a lung issue tied into there. If it's chloride and it's elevated, it can be going the other way, you could be hyperventilating, or you're trying to breathe all the time because your body can't get that air in, so you're having a lot of exchange of, of chloride in the body. So kind of thinking along those breathing issues that are, again, related to things like yeast and Babesia, or high toxicity levels, so your body's more acidic. And then as far as carbon dioxide, it can be elevated if you have cyclic vomiting syndrome, but it can also be elevated from, again, that high pH, right? So you're starting to put all these breathing situations together and acidity levels together. So if your acidity level is way up, then your carbon dioxide goes up. Your And when I say acidity level, I mean not like a, a low acidity, but a alkaline side, right? So there's a difference there. And if you don't know that difference in the post blow, maybe we need to, that's something I need to talk about a little bit because a lot of people tend to think I need to go vegan to raise my alkalinity. Well, if your carbon dioxide is up, if your chloride is up, maybe your alkalinity is too high. Um, so some of those things are in there. So again, looking at this CMP, it can be an incredible amount of information if you're able to look at it and understand it. So I just briefly touched on kidney by looking at some of the pieces like GFR being below 90 means the kidney might be struggling a bit. If you're looking at creatine being above 1.3, it could be breaking down your kidney. So if you're seeing these things trending in your labs, you need to have somebody look at these and go, okay, this is where we need to be. So just take a look at your CMP. Everybody has a CMP. It's probably the most tested test. They're testing it at the hospital every time you go. They're testing it on your physical every time you go. So look at that. Listen to this video and see if any of these markers make sense to you. When I see people coming in and they're just a little bit off in these, it gives me so many hints that can help me to understand where your health is, to help me understand, do we have a parasite? Do we have adrenal stress? Are we flushing out too much? So think about that when you're getting these CMPs. It's so much information that's readily available that is missed by most